Hi YouTube, in my last video I sculpted this Garfin from the Dark Crystal. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. So this is done with a wire armature and then aluminium foil and then a milliput. If you haven't used milliput before, it's a two part putty and it sets rock hard in about four hours. And milliput very kindly now sponsor this channel. So if you haven't tried it, I would go out buy yourself a pack and give it a go because I think you'll like it and I think you'll want to use it more and more for sculpting in the future. Okay, so this video is going to be about how I paint the Garfim. If you want to see my original sculpting video on this, um, just type in sculpting a Garfim into YouTube or Garfim Sculpt. I'll try to leave a link in the description below as well. Right, look how rubbish this brush is, really frayed out. Um, I always save my rubbish brushes rather than throw them away because they're brilliant for this kind of thing. So I didn't have any black, so I've mixed together dark green, dark red and dark blue. And it's given me this colour which will probably appear pretty black, but it's not. It's just uh, a sort of like an off black. So you can see here, because the um, bristles on the brush are so kind of splayed out, it's really good for getting into all those little nooks and crannies. And in fact, actually, if you had a really good quality brush with a good point on it, you wouldn't want to use it for something like this because you would wreck it really quickly. You can see this gets into all those little bits, or most of them. Um, I like to use the paint reasonably thick. Some people really water it down, even at this stage. Um, but I like to get a good coating of paint onto my sculpt. Um, you'll see later that after I finish this, because I work quite fast, um, there are little tiny um, you know, specks of light coloured milliput and things that I've left. But that doesn't matter because I do then go over it with a really watered down wash of this same colour and that gets into all those little um, extra um, spaces that I've left and missed. So it doesn't matter at all, it just makes it I think a lot quicker because I just cover it as fast as I can. Right, I'll speed up this next bit because I think you get the idea. I won't show you me painting the whole thing black. But um, the main thing is not to put the paint on so thick that it goes really blobby. You want it to cover all the parts but without any blobs. Right, this is how it looked after I finished this sort of black coat. Uh, you can still see there are little flecks of light colour here and there. But it's starting to look much more Gartham like um, I really love it, even at this stage it looks pretty good. But... The black kind of deadens it all, so all of the little details that I sculpted in with the milliput, some of them show up, but mainly they all kind of uh, yeah deaden a bit because of the black being all over it. That doesn't matter at all because the dry brushing that I'm going to do in a bit will bring out all of these details. It's a really nice process and I really love adding the paint. It's also really quite fast actually. Right, this next mix of paint on the plate here is what we had before, that blackish colour mixed with some pale gold. Um, I'm using System 3 acrylics for doing this. Again, you can see I'm using my really frayed rubbish brush. Um, so what you do is you rub it all on the kitchen paper. Sorry, I'm having to do this with one hand, so it's, um, it's not ideal. Um, what you could do is actually kind of squeeze the brush onto the kitchen paper as well. But I'm just rolling it here to get rid of as much of the paint as I can. And then what you do is um, lightly kind of dust it over everything. So if you think about it, um, if you really pressed really hard with the brush, you might get the bristles to go into all of those gaps and things, and you don't want to do that. You just want to kind of dust it over the top surfaces of everything. So what it's doing is it's picking out all of the high areas, and it's kind of adding a highlight to them. Uh, this way, it just means that all of the black um, that is left will be in all the sort of shadowy places, like all the gaps, all the kind of underneath sections and that sort of thing. Um, so this is brilliant and because it's a metallic um, paint, you know, the gold has got little tiny flecks of uh, gold sort of colour in it, it means that it catches the light and I'm pretty sure they probably did something similar with the original Garth in, in the film The Dark Crystal um, because they wanted them to look really kind of uh, creepy and be a dark colour but they still wanted all of the little details to show up. Uh, and I'm sure like under studio lighting and that sort of thing, it really picks out all of those details, gives them a nice kind of shimmer. So you can see here, look, it's starting to really kind of lift out those details. Right, what I did next was go to an even lighter colour and just add even more of the pale gold to it. 
and you can see here it's quite a bit brighter so every time you use a brighter color you're still kind of dusting it on in the same way you just want to use um, less paint so you kind of want your brush to be even drier you can really squeeze it out even more and then you just dust it on and if you think about it now it's going on the even higher kind of areas and really making them kind of stand out so I was just going to mention how long it takes to do each kind of painting stage. I would say the black coat originally took between an hour and a half and two hours to cover the whole garfin. And then these kind of where you're doing just a lighter colour and dusting it on, these passes probably only take about half an hour to do each colour. Okay, I'll speed this up again. I think you've got the idea for this particular colour. And then I'll show you what it looks like after that, right? So this is with all of that colour added on. So this is one coat of the black mixed with the gold and then another coat with a lot more of the gold added. Um, and you can see the details now are really starting to pop out. I'm going to do one more pass with another colour after this as well. Um, but I think you can see what it's doing. You can still see everywhere that's black is either like a little gap or a low down kind of section or an underneath section. So it really makes everything that should be a highlight, um, i.e. where the light would normally be hitting it, it makes those bits stand out. And it's really starting to make all those details pop. So I'm really pleased with it. Plus, because of the metallic nature of the paint, it really makes it almost look like it's made of bronze or something. When you lift it up, because it's so heavy, because of the millibutt, it actually kind of fools you into thinking that it could be made of metal. And I really like that about it. Okay, that's pretty much it for this particular stage. But like I say, I'm going to go on to the next lighter colour. Um, this next colour is going to be a mix of um, red and blue and silver. And it gives this nice kind of metallic purpley kind of look. And again, dry brush. And you want hardly anything on the brush at all now. I mean, it's basically got to be... You put it on but you hardly see anything just a tiny little hint of the silver i suppose you could like if you ended up putting too much of the silvery color on you could always come back over and add a bit more of the more sort of goldy sort of color back in over the top of that but um you can see what this is doing it's just picking it out even more and just making all those like high areas pop out um i was going to mention as well that by using milliput and it being rock hard after you finish making it, it's really good and it, you know that it's going to last forever. So a lot of people that do a lot of these kind of um, sculpts and things um, make them actually using things like latex. And I never use latex just because it doesn't last. Like you finish your sculpt and you've done all your good details and things and then the latex starts to break down and it can actually sort of dissolve over about three or four years or something so um, or just start breaking up a little bit and I don't like the idea of my sculpts breaking up so I, that's another reason that I use milliput because I know it's going to last forever so I was really really pleased with it at this stage it's starting to look much more like an actual garfin from the dark crystal and there's just one more thing that I really want to do to this um, well there's a couple of things actually I want to paint his eyes um, and I also want to add some fur tufts to this because I think the fur tufts are going to make it look much more like a real creature. You can see at the moment his eyes are still this kind of bronzy colour. Um, but what I'll do initially, I'll paint them white and then I'll paint them red over the top of that. The reason for painting them white is obviously so that the red shows up. If you put the red straight on it probably wouldn't show up that much at all. Um, I was just going to show you this sort of close-up of the back of his shell so you can see just how much of the dark colour I left and how the dry brush, because it is so dry, it really um, picks out a lot of those little details. I think the um, chest area has become one of my favourite parts of this because um, of the extra details that I put on, like the four extra claws that come out, um, they really stand out now. And I was really glad that I made those separately. I was just going to kind of sculpt them straight on. But I made them separately and glued them on. And so they really do stick out. Um, okay, so that's it for this part of this um, painting stage. But I'll show you next what I'm going to do with the 
fur. So I just took some of this string, which is basically, it's got a sort of a hessian kind of feel to it. And you can actually just get it to kind of fray out using one of these dreadlock combs. And you can see I've got uh, quite a few tufty bits that I've kind of managed to just brush off basically. But what you can also do is tie little bits together. So after kind of splaying it all out, you can tie a little knot in the end and then you create these little tufts. And in big areas, you can simply just glue the knot underneath so the tuft kind of sticks out. And that's really quite simple to do. But there are quite a few places where there isn't enough of a gap to tie a big knot under it, like in these little tiny bits in the arm. So I have to do a much smaller tuft with a much smaller knot to be able to get it to fit into those sections. So I do know that this stage of the process takes quite a long time to do to get all the little fur tufts but this is what it ends up looking like so you can see look tucked in underneath all these edges i try to follow the actual um sort of footage from the dark crystal of the garthins to try and see where all these kind of tufts came from and i think i've got pretty much all of them in the right sort of places and like I say, it looks much more realistic, like an actual sort of um, crab or something would have. Um, so I was really even more pleased at this stage because it's these little finishing touches that although they take a long time, like this fur certainly took longer than it took to paint the whole thing. But like I say, it's all these finishing touches that make all the difference. And at the end of it, once you've finished it, it may, it may be a bit of hard work while you're actually doing it, and you may get a bit fed up at times, but at the end, you don't look back on a sculpt and go, oh, that took me ages. You look back on a sculpt and you, you just look at how good it's turned out at the end, and you think that was worth it. You know, however long it took, it was worth it. So, yeah, I totally urge anybody who is a sculptor to just go that, little extra bit at the end um, when it comes to kind of details and things because like I say it does it makes all the difference. Okay this is where I painted the eyes white and you can see I didn't paint the whole eyeball white I actually just did it like a sort of a circle of white on each eye. This means that when you paint the red on it will kind of fade around the edge and go like a darker red hopefully um, and it will really make the red show up I think. Okay, and this is the finished sculpt. So people quite often ask me how long a sculpt takes to do. Um, this particular one, I would say I did it over about five days, five or six days, um, but they're quite long days. I've put quite a lot of hours into this and I work right into the night as well because it's the time when it's kind of quietest. You know, my kids have gone to bed and I can kind of concentrate on things a lot more. Um, and also I like to put movies on in the background. So quite often I will be up till about half three, four o'clock in the morning and then just go to bed and get a few hours sleep before the next day. Um, but I think it's a good way to do it. It means that you just really work on something and work on it until it gets done. And yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with the end result of this one. I hope you all like it. And if you're new to sculpting, you know, why not go out and give it a try? It's, really good fun and what you end up with you can keep forever afterwards. This one is going to go down in my studio with all my other sculpts. If you haven't checked out any of my other sculpting videos have a little look because I like to make all kinds of weird creatures from mainly from sort of 80s creature feature movies um, but yeah all sorts of things so check out things like my gremlin video he's probably the one that took the longest because he's a life-size gremlin there's quite a lot of detail in it but there's loads of other things like critters and ghoulies and all sorts. Um, if you haven't used Milliput already, here's a little shameless bit of advertising for you. Um, here's the Milliput. Make sure you go out and buy yourself a pack. It will be one of the best things you've ever done if you haven't tried it already. You will love this stuff. Okay, hopefully some of the tips that I've shown you in this video will be useful to you in your own sculpting. Um, Check out my other videos and hit subscribe if you want to see anything new that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.